It is not only the spectators of an act who usually assess its morality or immorality according to whether or not it is successful. No, the performer himself does so. For the motives and intentions behind it are seldom sufficiently clear and simple, and sometimes even the memory seems to be muddled by the success of an act, so that one foists false motives upon one's act oneself, or treats inessential motives as essential. Success often bestows upon an act the whole honest luster of the good conscience. A failure casts the shadow of pangs of conscience over the most estimable deed. From this there follows the familiar practice of the politician, who thinks, only give me success. If I have success, I shall also have brought every honest soul over to my side and made myself honest in my own eyes, too. In a similar way, success is supposed to be a substitute for greater validity. Even today, many educated people think that the victory of Christianity over Greek philosophy is a proof of the superior truth of the former although in this case it was only the coarser and more violent that conquered the more spiritual and delicate. So far as superior truth is concerned, it is enough to observe that the awakening sciences have allied themselves point by point with the philosophy of Epicurus, but point by point rejected Christianity.